Anyone with even a passing interest in French cinema has probably heard of the directing duo Junet and Caro. Jean-Pierre Junet is perhaps best known for directing Alien Resurrection, as well as the sublime Amelie, while Marc Cario took a directorial hiatus before making the underrated sci-fi Dante 01. It's their early combined efforts that have earned them their most acclaim, with Delicatessen in 1991 and a little oddity from 1995 known as The City of Lost Children. This visually arresting fable even got a belated video game on PC and PlayStation thanks to Psychonosis. Your first impression of the game would likely be the same as the movie. It looks amazing. The pre-rendered backgrounds offer a great amount of detail and atmosphere with well-chosen camera angles that truly give a sense of your surroundings. It is, however, weirdly paced, confusingly plotted, and there's a large chunk of humour that is lost in translation. I think I'd better stay here a little while. I don't believe it! The lighthouse isn't working! You play as Miette, a little orphan girl whose name literally translates to as Crumb, your guardian Pyrvra, a bickering pair of Siamese twins whose name means octopus in English, cruelly makes her ward steal for her, and she wants Miette to do her dirty work. The beginning of the game doesn't necessarily explain this to you all that well though. After a CGI intro, you start facing an eight-limbed school mom in silence. A few beats pass and you'll get your first piece of dialogue. Till here, rob the cashier's hut or we'll throw you in the cellar. That's not much of a warning considering at this stage you'll still get into grips with the Resident Evil style tank controls. You can get an extra line of dialogue which does explain your first port of call by pressing the talk button, page down but what you get is more of an expository statement than a world-building conversation. Eventually, you'll deduce pieces of the main plot, which is suitably weird. A nefarious scientist has been kidnapping children. He has this illusion that by stealing their dreams, they will make him young again, and he has created some technically advanced cyborgs, known as Cyclops, to do his dirty work, each with augmented vision and hearing. The movie's focus splits between Miette and a character named One, a performing strongman played by Ron Perlman, who's searching for his missing little brother. But here, you'll only play as Miette. One is essentially the protagonist of the movie, but if you only play the game, you wouldn't necessarily know this. Map very good, but how we find our way in the mist? The controls are a little awkward, even by the standards of the time. Page down talks, page up picks up, enter interacts, control runs, alt crouches and tab opens your inventory. Nearly all actions require you to be in a very specific position to perform. And if you're not, you get a very slow response from Miette exclaiming, I can't do anything. Even when running, you're likely to rewatch a slow recoil animation whenever she bumps into anything. And you'll do this a lot thanks to the tank controls. <coughs> Everything may be a little cumbersome, but at least they work as they're supposed to. The major problems of the game are more to do with the design choices themselves, and that extends to the puzzles as well. There are only a handful of fairly simple puzzles in total, each one artificially extended by hiding necessary objects behind scenery or placing them far in the background. None of them are particularly clever, and some may require knowledge of the film. For example, if you've seen the movie, you'll know that the Cyclops are sensitive to sound. Hey, stop that! I can't stand that noise! In the game, you'll only know this if you randomly ring a bell while standing next to one of them. So instead of the plot logically pushing the game forward, it is instead the game mechanics. By this I mean you'll generally have the item before you have the need for that item. An icon will appear on the top left to indicate if you can take an item if you're nearby. And the result of this design ethos is that you spend hours exploring the fancifully designed areas in the hope that you'll eventually find something to pick up, rather than logically looking for that item beforehand. 
It's strange as the movie itself offers some more interesting puzzles and solutions. For example, one memorable scene has me yet tie a magnet to a mouse in order to get a key hidden in a vent. No such inventiveness exists here. The closest you get is feeding a sausage to a guard dog. The whole experience seems strangely truncated too. The entirety of the mad scientist's lair on an oil rig, a ripe location for puzzle design, is told in a disjointed cutscene followed by an end credits crawl. And this is where the entire third act of the movie takes place. As such, the entire game is set on the docks of the French fishing town and ends before it starts to get exciting. I don't think I can manage it. So the city of lost children is something of a missed opportunity. It's cut short before anything interesting has even begun. And I suspect that this may have been down to the fact that Psychnosis was bought out by Sony at this time and they demanded all of their games to be ported to the PlayStation as a result. As it is, The City of Lost Children could easily have been a lot better, but what we got is just the same as the film, a little bit awkward around the edges. Thank you all for watching! If you fancy playing The City of Lost Children yourself, check out the link below to discover how to get it working on Windows 10. It would help us immensely if you could like, share, subscribe and ring that bell to keep you informed of future videos. And with that, I'll see you next time on The Collection Chamber.